Hello and welcome along to this video which is a series of videos that's looking at the setup and configuration of the Chocolatey Quick Deployment Environment version 2. So, so far in this series we have uh, set up and configured a, a base image of QDE into my running instance of VMware Fusion. We have then stepped through the initial uh, configuration script which took the uh, already installed components and made them specific to our running instance of QDE here, okay? The next step that we're gonna look at is the initial setup and configuration of uh, Nexus. So Nexus is a package repository. It can handle lots of different packaging types. You can kind of see them listed out here. There is uh, Docker files, uh, Git LFS, Maven, NuGet, NPM. There's lots of different ones. Uh, there's lots of uh, repository formats that you can use. Now, the reason that we've chosen to uh, install and configure uh, Nexus on this image is because um, th this version is the free and open source version. It's really simple to get up and running with. There are there is a commercial offering that expands the capabilities of Nexus, including uh, high availability, uh, etc. There's lots of different features you might want to take a look at. But for what the requirements of QDE, uh, the free <coughs> the free and open source version uh, has what we need. So in this video, what we're going to look at is the initial setup of uh, Nexus, and also having a quick look through what uh, how how we've set it up in terms of the different. Uh, repository sources that have been available. So what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna sign in. So if you go back to the, uh, the readme guide that you have, then it will mention what the initial username and password are. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and grab this password and I'm gonna go and log in with that password over here. Now, I'm just gonna say never here to remember that password. Now the setup wizard for the initial configuration wants you to change that password. So I'm just going to pick a password here that I'm going to remember and I'm going to attempt to type it properly and click next. I'm going to say never again to the password reminder up here. So what this is asking for is do we want to configure anonymous access for this uh, repository instance? Now what that means is if I have if this QDE instance is only ever going to be running internally within my environment, then enabling something like not anonymous and anonymous access might make sense. If we if you're opening up this QDE instance to the internet, then leaving and enabling anonymous access is probably not a good idea. You will want to enable uh, an additional uh, security realm in the in the in the context of uh, Nexus so that you can restrict access to those feeds based on uh, something. Now for my setup, I'm gonna say that it's fine to leave uh, an anonymous access enabled. So I'm gonna click next here, and then I'm gonna click finish. Well, what I'm gonna do, uh, before I do anything else, I'm gonna sign out again, and I'm gonna re-sign in with the password that I just created. Because the, the first thing I want to do here, and this is noticed, noted in the, uh, information here is that you may want to change the API key. So the default API key that was set up with that initial setup script was this one. Now, as part of my setup, I'm one of, for, mainly because I want it to be completely unique, is I want to uh, have a new API key, okay? So to allow that to happen, I'm gonna click on uh, admin at the top here, and I'm gonna click on the new get API key, and I'm gonna ask for that to be reset. So I'm gonna click reset here. I'm gonna put in my password. So that's me just reset it. And then I want to access the API key. I'm gonna say the password again. So this is my new API key. So I'm gonna copy that and paste that into my notepad. I'm gonna to need to use that later. Uh, so for your purposes, you may wanna put that into some sort of uh, password vault within your organization. But for now, I'm just gonna put this here because I know I'm gonna need that later. Okay, so with that done, that is kind of the initial uh, setup of Nexus complete. We're now ready to start uh, pushing packages into these repositories uh, and to be able to consume packages from the repositories we set up. So in terms of what we have configured here, there are uh, three uh, repositories in here. So the first one is uh, Choco install. So this is of type 
this is a raw hosted repository. So what this is uh, serving for us are some installation scripts that we are going to use later. Let me just uh, zoom in a little bit here so we can see this a little bit better. There's a chocolate install.ps1 and there is a client setup.ps1. Now when we come around to uh, adding client machines into our uh, uh, QDE environment, uh, these scripts are going to be the ones that are used uh, for uh, doing those installations. Now, the way that uh, the, the reason that we have set it up like this is because we're just taking advantage of the functionality that Nexus has. Nexus has the capability to serve raw files. It, it, it's not just a package repository. Uh, you can ho have raw files hosted here as well. The other one that we've got set, we've got two new get feeds set up here within uh, Nexus. The first one is chocolate internal. Chocolate internal is where by default, all of the packages are going to be consumed from. So if we go back to uh, our PowerShell prompt here and we do a choco source list, we will see that the way that this QD environment has been set up is that the default chocolate community repository has been disabled. There is access to the chocolate license feed, uh, but the chocolate internal feed has got a lower priority. So this is the one that's going to be uh, used first. So uh, any queries that go out for doing a package installation is going to first look at our chocolate internal repository. Now, as part of our setup and configuration that we did in a previous video, we asked to uh, download and internalize a couple of extra packages. So one of those was malware bytes and the other one was notepad plus plus. So you'll see here that those are available with it to us within this repository. So any other uh, packages that you chose in that uh, grid view that was uh, you were presented with will already be here within this uh, chocolate internal repository. The other one that comes into play once we start looking at our uh, Jenkins configuration is how we can go about using this one for uh, testing our internalization, our automa automated internalization process. So Prior, rather than pushing directly into our chocolate internal feed, uh, the, the Jenkins jobs will uh, first put the, any internalized packages into this one. The idea is that this is used uh, for the purposes of testing, and then if everything is happy, it will then later be pushed to the chocolate internal repository. So this is the setup that we have. Uh, Nexus has got lots of different ways that it can be configured. Uh, for, uh, for example, it can be set up with a Proxied repository. Uh, so the proxy repository has a link back to another repository, for example, chocolatey.org. And on first request of a package from that proxy feed, if it doesn't exist locally, it'll reach out to that proxy, download it, and put it into that repository for later consumption. So there's lots of ways that you can configure Nexus, but in terms of what's required for uh, organizational best practices initially, uh, this is kind of what you should be aiming for. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So from a Nexus repository, a Nexus repository point of view, um, it's configured. We've changed the API key, and it's ready to be consumed. So uh, one of those packages that we uh, put into there before. So I should now be able to do a Choco install Notepad plus plus. So that's not going to reach out to chocolate.org because that package is internalized now and it's now available within that feed. Uh, so I will now be able to download and internalize that package that we did as part of the initial setup of uh, this QDE environment. So with that done and that installed, we'll just see that working. So now I should be able to right click on a file and now I should be able to edit in Notepad++ where I wasn't, too, wasn't able to do that before. Okay, so that is the initial setup and configuration of Nexus. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll look at the initial setup and configuration of Jenkins. So hopefully I'll see you in that video. Thank you very much.